Okay, as we've reported before, we know Washington State Governor Inslee does not like free speech. However, it turns out he found a few other elected officials in the state who will join him in this effort. Wait until you find out who they are. Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan, and this is We the Governed. And just as a quick trigger warning in the beginning, we are reporting from Washington State, the state of eternal and endless emergency powers. And also, I'd like to warn my viewers that nothing I say here has been approved by Inslee's Ministry of COVID Compliance. So just in case you only want to listen to what the governor is wanting you to hear, please stop watching now. So with that trigger warning out of the way, it's always worth pointing out that the endless emergency in Washington State because of the Omicron uh, variant that is sweeping the state right now, it is turning into a lot of silliness and ridiculous behavior by a governor whose policies can only be defined as uh, ridiculous at most, most of the time. And going into that, that's why we were talking about, as we mentioned earlier, that Inslee has been on a search to try to find people in the state legislature and state senate who would be willing to support his efforts to suppress free speech. Since uh, he had come out recently, and uh, we did a video on this earlier, on his desire to suppress free speech. Anybody who dares to question election results, how dare they? Let's put them in prison. So uh, Inslee finally got his wish, and he uh, proposed Senate Bill 5843, which has uh, recently recently been put there, and you can see that it was uh, made at the request of the office of the governor, and he was able to actually find some senators who were willing to join him in this effort. So, uh, you know, it's amazing that he did, but let's look at who they are. And in this case, we're really looking at nine senators, and, uh, you know, here they are. These are the guys that sponsored it, and uh, some of these people we would kind of expect to be in this category, uh, Senator Sam Hunt and Cooterer and Frocht. I mean, these people have a long history of uh, attempting to suppress free speech. They really don't like the First Amendment. They do everything they can to suppress it when they have the opportunity. Senator Kaiser's kind of in that camp at times as well. And a few of them are relatively new. Uh, Senator Nobles is relatively new to the chamber. She may not be as familiar with how the Constitution works, uh, since it's no requirement to be elected to office to actually have any familiarity at all with the Constitution. But regardless, these guys right here, these are the ones who decided that they would join with Inslee and uh, suppress any potential free speech that uh, they don't like. And so therefore, they signed on to Inslee's bill. So one of the questions that then comes up is, in addition to hating free speech, what else do these guys have in common with each other? And I think it's worth asking that question. I mean, we know that uh, they are basically willing to carry the governor's water and uh, do whatever he tells them to do. So well, they may not represent their constituents very well. They're certainly willing to represent Inslee's best interests, or at least whatever in interest that Inslee claims to have at that point in time. But that's not the only thing that they have in common. It turns out that they're all Democrats, which probably is no surprise to anybody who's been tracking some of these issues in Washington state, but it is worth noting. And unfortunately, the tendency of the Democratic Party to get uh, consistently more authoritarian as we move forward in their efforts to suppress and uh, censor anybody who thinks differently than they do, and their efforts to silence all who dare question anything that they put out as their dogma, um, this has become more troubling for those who actually still care about the First Amendment and uh, who care about free speech at all. And so this is something that is worth being aware of and looking forward that, at least at this point in time, they were unable to find any Republican elected officials who who uh, were willing to sign on to a suppression of free speech. So while there's oftentimes a lot of complaints that there's no differences between the party, at least in this case, we can find that there's only one party that wants to suppress your free speech in this state. But one of the other questions is, really, because some of these people are smarter than this normally, what were they actually promised to sponsor Inslee's pet anti-free speech bill? And uh, this really comes down to the classic question of what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, how much did Inslee bribe them and what did he bribe them with? Because there's a lot of things a governor can do to convince a elected official in either the state legislature or the Senate to go along with whatever program he has. And that's particularly true. Most of these people are from relatively safe districts, not all of them. There's a couple 
couple of them that are actually in districts that uh, could be challenged and they might lose their seats in the future. But what's Inslee promising them? And usually it has to do with money, but I'll guarantee you Inslee's never going to tell you. And in fact, most of those promises and those bribes, you know, which we might be calling them, uh, whatever those are, they're going to be things that you won't see out in the open. And you're probably not going to discover it in a records request to Governor Inslee's office. Not that that should prevent you from filing a records request, because it would be nice to know what is it that he's promising these guys to go along with such a foolish bill. But that's the situation that we're in. And I do want to point out that there are many elected officials at a national level who have broken the basic foundation that this bill says, and these people could be put in prison. Former uh, uh, presidential candidate Al Gore, former vice president uh, before that, and uh, former Senator Hillary Clinton who was also a presidential candidate and lost in 2016 and has denied the election results every day since then. And uh, President Biden right now, who's pre-denying the results of the elections coming up here in the midterms. And uh, Stacey Abrams, of course, who said that uh, the election results in Georgia were rigged when she ran for the uh, governor's office and lost. All of these people are claiming that the elections were not fair and they were rigged and that the results were wrong. So under Inslee's proposed bill, all of these people should be put in jail if they show up in Washington state. However, as we know, the reality is this bill is not intended to go and attack political allies. It is exclusively and only being drafted and intended to attack those who Governor Inslee doesn't like and uh, who the Democratic Party apparently doesn't like. So that's where we're at right now. I don't see the ACLU stepping up and doing much. Maybe they'll come out with some uh, weak, spineless sort of response to it. They've generally lost their way in, uh, in supporting the First Amendment in recent times. But that's where we're at, and that bill is getting uh, some here. Hearing. And uh, the one thing I do want to point out and put in perspective as we talk more about the current legislative session is that Inslee's administration is not doing well. And so one of the things that he has to do is keep throwing out stupid ideas like this and bad bills in an effort to sort of distract people from just how bad this guy's actually doing his job. And I want to make sure that people put that in perspective. So what can you do about it? Well, log on and make comments about this bill. Uh, you can do it uh, and all the time go to the, to the legislature. There's a lot of different tools out there and getting in there. Go in there, tell them what you think about the bill. Send emails to all your legislators, especially if you can find any Democrats near you. If you have a Democrat legislator or senator, let them know how you don't support suppressing free speech. But remember, no matter what happens, the only way you make a difference is if you show up. If you just sit at home and get angry and do nothing, well then you're not able to make much of an impact that way. So if you want to learn more about this or anything else, feel free to look in the comment section below. I have a lot of details there. And uh, also, you can go to wethegovern.com. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with others. And just remember, as I always say to those who want to be involved in the political process, the future belongs to those who show up.